Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at five of the best guitars I've ever played. Should be a lot of fun. Let's jump in and check them out. Now as somebody who obviously really loves to play guitar, loves to collect guitars, and likes to look at sort of like the artistic or design side of guitars, this list could have been a lot longer, but we're just gonna whittle it down to my top five, and hopefully this will answer the question that I sometimes get. Well, Daryl, what guitars do you actually play on when you're not prepping for demos? Well, here's five. Let's not mess about, and let's look at the first guitar on my top five. It's on my lap right now. Yep, it's an Ibanez. <laughs> Now at this point, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Daryl, did you just seriously put an Ibanez on the top five guitars you've ever played? Like ever in your entire life? Yeah, I did. Here's a few things that make this guitar amazing. So here it is. This is the Ibanez Prestige S series guitar made in Japan. This guitar is a race car. Why do I love it? Why do I think it's one of the best designs or one of the best guitars? I've ever played. It's all about the ergonomics. It's all about the playability. Number one, it's light, just over six pounds. Number two, it's thin. So thin they couldn't put an output jack here. So thin they couldn't fit the five-way switch through the body. It's that thin. It's thin, it's light, it's well balanced, and it's all about the playability. I've also got to say this thing's incredibly stable. I live in a climate with like harsh weather changes from summer and winter um, and this has never moved. It's got the titanium reinforcement rods and never tweaked it once in the four or five years I've used it. Stable, uh, supremely playable. If you ever want a guitar that's going to make you play better, faster, more precise, this is a great guitar. Uh, avoid it if you hate thin necks. Other than that, it's a guitar player's dream. Now guitar number two on my list is also made in Japan. And how would I describe this guitar? Well, probably really shiny to the point where if this is hanging on the wall, I can't physically walk by it without stopping and playing it. Yep, this is a Zamatis. <laughs> So why on earth did the Zamatis make it in my top five list? Well, this guitar is just so unique. The etched metal top is not gonna be for everybody, but I love everything about it. It's a traditional guitar delivering traditional tones, handmade in Japan, exquisitely well-made without an insanely high price tag, which means you can get handmade quality without, you know, totally going crazy on the price. So beautiful, made in Japan, awesome tones, great playability, surprisingly light for a single cut, coming in well under eight pounds. This thing is the full package. Unique looks, great tones, good price for what it is in terms of like a very well-built guitar. It's just got everything. Well, now we're getting serious. This is the Valenti Nebula. Now I worked with the guys from Valenti to create this custom instrument and it just turned into an absolute showstopper. One of the main features of course is the flame maple tinted neck. Just yeah, showstopper for sure. You guys know I'm a huge fan of matte black. So we've got matte black on the back. Of course that neck, exposed binding, flame maple in this kind of like ice blue finish. So the whole theme of the guitar is kind of like that ice blue gold hardware and black. You'll see it over the entire kind of theme of the guitar, just blue, gold, and black. And it just turned into one of the best playing, most amazing guitars I've ever played. Here's guitar number four on my list. Yes, check this baby out. It's a Pauletti. Yeah. 
So this is the Pauletti Stratospheric. Why did it make my top five list when there's so many amazing S-style guitars out there? from Fender's own custom shop to all sorts of boutique makers. Well, it's handmade in Italy. The body is chestnut wood from the 1800s and there's brass everywhere. There's just nothing else like it on the market. It is a vintage style guitar, so kind of lower output pickups, big chunky neck. So like the Ibanez, if you don't like a thin neck, you might want to avoid that. But here, if you don't like a thick neck, you might want to avoid it because it is pretty chunky. And of course, just vintage vibes all the way through nothing else like it and as you can see i've already started to add my own patina here on the brass guard as you know i start picking and sweating and all that kind of stuff from playing it so you can see i've already started to add my own patina to this guitar which is one of you know the huge kind of I don't know. It's one of the cool things about this guitar. Very kind of thin finish. So as you wear it in, it's going to really become your own. And this one's definitely, you know, started to go that way for me. So yeah, if you're in the market for like a Strat style guitar, this one makes my list for just being so unique. It is handmade, so it's pretty expensive, but what a cool guitar. Well, we've arrived at guitar number five of the five best I've ever played. And as I mentioned off the top, well, almost any of the guitars I feature on this channel could be there. I'd love to put like the Gretsch Duo Jet or the 6118 Anniversary. Amazing guitars. There's things like the Relish uh, guitars with interchangeable pickups. Amazing technology. All of those guitars are just insane in their own right and just beautiful um, and other handmade guitars you've seen on this channel there's so many amazing amazing guitars but for the last one and to be completely honest well i gotta go with my heart on this one you guys know i'm a huge telly fan and of course we can't use parts casters or true vintage guitars so this is a made in japan telecaster <music> So why did I include the best guitar ever made on my list? Well, because it's the best guitar ever made. Yeah, I'm a huge Telecaster fan, so I had to go with my heart on this one. Now, why did this particular uh, Japanese 60s reissue guitar make my list? Well, because number one, it's affordable. Number two, it's really well made, and it gives you the vintage kind of Fender experience without number one, buying a vintage Fender guitar, which are so the prices are insane and hugely inflated on those guitars or even a Fender original series these Japanese guitars whether it's a 50s reissue or a 60s reissue just give you so much bang for your buck this one is in I think midnight black beautiful guitar they're all double bound just stunning in this black and gold for sure and of course the 60s reissue has the rosewood fingerboard um, seven and a quarter inch radius it has all the vintage appointments vintage tunings tuning machines rather um so it gives you kind of like that full vintage fender experience for like a really affordable price so i had to go with my heart on this one and i think just the features uh, the vintage aspect of this guitar the price it all comes together to being like an absolute showstopper in terms of value and in terms of giving you a vintage experience so i often get the question daryl what's your favorite guitar of all time or what's the best guitar in your collection or what do you play when you're not prepping for demos all that kind of stuff so hopefully you guys enjoyed that list let me know if you'd like to see some others like maybe my five favorite guitars under a thousand dollars or maybe five favorite under 500 something like that let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see something like that other than that all my information will be in the video description below have yourself a great day